Good morning, Chamber members. I'm Isabel Renault, President and CEO of the St. John's County Chamber of Commerce, and I want to welcome you to this uh, Chamber conversation this morning with City Manager of the City of St. Augustine, John Regan. John, it's a pleasure to have you with us this morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, there's a lot going on, and we need to be focused on uh, moving forward to get our community reopened. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you uh, joining us this morning. What we're going to do with John is I've asked our members of the Chamber and the Historic Area Council of St. Augustine to uh, submit some questions to John. And we have a few questions we're going to cover uh, in order to address some of the, the concern of our members. So John, I'm going to jump right in and ask you the first question that our members have submitted. The first one is, I watched with great, great interest your presentation earlier this week about the city's collaboration with the smart thermometer maker, Kinza, to place some 600 thermometers in strategic locations across the city. Can you talk a little bit more about that collaboration? And specifically, a question from our member was, can commercial businesses apply for this program? Okay, great. So the, uh, the prim first off, if I may, Isabel, let me back up just for the membership a little bit. You know me as the city manager, but my, my uh, education and the bulk of my career has been in the field of environmental engineering. Yep. And in that career, I have uh, done everything from research projects for uh, groundwater monitoring systems, design and monitoring systems, surve surveillance systems, using information that is uh, early surveillance data to affect very large scale contamination cleanup sites, uh, particularly in Gainesville, Florida. Oh, okay. And uh, I have also managed waterborne disease outbreaks, uh, particularly in the, with an organism called uh, Cryptosporidium parvum. So the, the theory of social uh, distancing, uh, the theory of public health is the same theory of environmental engineering, which is, uh, surveillance, detection, rapid identification, rapid response, isolation, containment, uh, cleanup, treatment, whatever you want to call it. So the theories are all the same. So when we first saw the Kinza um, use of uh, body temperature monitoring mm -hmm. and the theory of it, it, it made complete sense to create a new form, a new tool for our public health uh, officials in order to be able to predict trends and to deploy the normal protocol of epidemiology, which is um, detection, monitoring, um, testing, isolation, containment. And if you can identify a problem quickly and contain it, uh, then you can keep it from becoming an epidemic. And uh, worse, you can, uh, you can keep it from becoming a pandemic where we find ourselves. So the thermometer, um, initially when I saw that, I was thinking ahead that uh, we need to improve the detection tools because uh, COVID-19 testing is lagging so far behind that that's such an indicator that is so lacking information and not really uh, adequate. And it also um, basically means you've been infected. The, the Kinza program had out predicted, have been out predicting flu outbreaks and have been out predicting uh, COVID-19 outbreaks across the country. So the theory is that by the city um, acquiring thermometers and being able to get them placed into the high impact households to create a denser, a far more dense network where we can see trends happening arguably weeks before you would see it in the hospital uh, just made a lot of sense. And so our goal is to get the thermometers that we purchased into larger households, uh, households that are at uh, underserved communities, uh, and in households where people have to move around the community uh, talking to the public a lot. And being a tourism economy, this is very important because by definition, we bring tens of thousands of people to downtown St. Augustine and, and, and the surrounding area. So all this made tremendous amount of sense. So our thermometers are targeted very specifically uh, to the, that type of profile. Um, and 
but what I'm, I'm going to encourage people to follow the protocols that are about to be uh, let in the next couple of days about how to call us, how to interact with us to see if you qualify for a thermometer. The, um, I have ordered additional thermometers. We've, in the past day, we've had uh, an incredible philanthropic out, outpouring towards the city to expand the program. Um, I was initially planning to keep this within the city limit because I'm spending city monies. Uh, but uh, the commission asked me to uh, develop a plan that expands it outside the city limit because the urban core is much bigger. And uh, uh, that I was directed by the city commission to do that. The interesting response, uh, and I will say led very much by Commissioner John Valdez, has been an outpouring of philanthropic donations uh, to the city to order those thermometers, not using city money, to get an immediate uh, rollout into the surrounding area. Uh, so this morning, uh, I've just placed an order for an additional uh, three, uh, 300 thermometers that can help with that program. So uh, it does, what I'm working on now, okay, the, besides the thermometer rollout in the city, the next big issue for us is what is going to be our plan to responsibly reopen the community? And so um, whether you're looking at the WHO guidelines, the World Health Organization guidelines, or the uh, framework, uh, the, the, the federal government just released a document called the Framework for Reopening America mm -hmm. uh, that has some very specific uh, suggestions for communities that are low to moderate outbreaks, which we fit that category, uh, and, and strategies, okay? so. In all of the documents, it doesn't matter where you're looking for guidance. The, uh, the concept of being able to detect uh, any type of reemergence is critical, and that's where the thermometers come into place. Now, many, many, uh, one thermometer in a household serves everybody in the household, okay? So if you have five people, you're getting five temperatures because it's just a household thermometer that has a smart technology. Many uh, people that work in our downtown industries and businesses will qualify uh, with regard to the initial order of, um, at this point, which would be 900 thermometers. Uh, but these thermometers, um, you can order them, uh, you can buy them at Target, you can buy them at Wal uh, Walmart, uh, you can order them on Am uh, Amazon. There is a backlog, uh, but uh, the, 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 their production is ramping up, and so, whether you, whether you have a $20 device given you to by the city or you order, uh, a com if you commercially order a thermometer for, for your home or a business or whatever, ideally for your home, um, you know, they're, look, they're $20 uh, and every thermometer becomes part of the network. Uh, so, um, so I guess the answer to the question, the, the, the tail end of your question about mm -hmm how can commercial businesses apply to be in the program? You don't apply, you just get a thermometer, you're in the program. Whether it's a, a, a thermometer given to you by the city or whether you just buy a thermometer, you're in okay. the program. So, so just to clarify, if you're a resident of the city of St. Augustine, there are some specific areas you're targeting that will get the thermometer. If you're a business owner, you can just go and buy it on Amazon or other places, but somehow, there is a link that can um, um, just link the thermometer to the entire program if right. they wish so, right? You can buy it commercially, but if you are a business owner, uh, starting next week, okay, mm -hmm. and, and in the next couple of days, we're gonna have quite a media rollout and push uh, on how to um, uh, contact the city for a thermometer. Uh, so next, let's say next week, okay, let's say it's, it's Tuesday morning, and you call the city, and the phone number will be 825-1006. I don't have the questionnaire in front of me, but here's how the questionnaire flows, okay? You're a business owner. Let's say that you're a small restaurant owner. We'll presume that. So the first question will be, um, do you have a, uh, a smartphone? Do you have a, a, a phone that's connected to the internet like an Android or, or an Apple? because it doesn't work unless you have a phone. Does anybody in your household have one? Yes. What is your name and address? Okay, we have your name and address. Um, does your employment or work 
cause you to have to move around the community and interact with uh, the public uh, and maybe more than 10 people. Yeah, I own a restaurant. Okay, I have people coming and going. I have people doing yep. pickup. Uh, so that's a big issue. That's because people moving around the community is how disease spreads. And that's the population that we want to have these high impact thermometers. We're not looking for a, a retired couple at home that has taken all types of precautionary measures, right? We're looking for people who have to work, who have to move around. The next question becomes, how many people are in your household? And ideally, we're looking for larger households. Ideally, we're looking for households with children, uh, maybe uh, taking care of elderly people in your home. Uh, and so there, there's a, a heavy weighting in the criteria if you have um, more, more than one person in your household, okay? Uh, so, so let's say that you um, have a household of three. And we don't go any deeper in that question at all, okay? All we care about is you have a larger household. We don't need to know if they're children. We don't need to know if you're married or unmarried or roommates, just how many people live in the house, okay? The next question then becomes, are you, um, does your employment or volunteering, um, are you in the healthcare industry? Do you work at any type of... Uh, you know, care provider industries. I, I don't remember the specific question. I have it. Essential, it. maybe industry. Yeah, yeah, but we're not. Tr I did some focus group tests, and I found that when I used the word essential, people just didn't know what it means. Okay. I'm trying to weight towards people that are around sick people. Mm -hmm. So, if you, you know, do you work in the healthcare industry, or you're a first responder, or you're a public safety officer? Uh, do you, uh, or do you work in a supporting role? So if, are you the janitor at the hospital? That, that's someone who we want to reach, okay? So, so there's waiting for that in, uh, in the questionnaire. And then the last question is uh, really something that Kinza asked me to put on the list, which is, uh, would, would, a, would a smart thermometer be helpful to you and your household? And um, we're looking for you to say yes. I mean, that's why I called. I mean, isn't it obvious? I called you. But that what they say is that in their metrics around the country is that that last piece of affirmation, because we're giving you something for free, right? You, you know? Yeah. We so so, so it, 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 it causes us a little bit of an improvement of a psychological investment. Uh, and so that's how the questionnaire works. And uh, uh, the idea is that we will get a regional distribution of these thermometers. We will have the densest network in the country of body temperature measurements that are just naturally people, you feel sick, you measure your temperature, it's seamless. There's no ID information being transferred. It's just going up into an aggregated data system being analyzed by uh, high powered mathematics to determine if there's a pattern. So let me ask you this question, and, and maybe you may not know the answer yet to this question, but. I'm sure that we have some business owners and restaurant owners um, and downtown businesses that are wondering, that receive a lot of guests. Are you anticipating some sort of protocol where uh, you see a, the business owner checking temperature? Or are you, you know, people have been talking about things like that. Do you foresee anything like that? Well, let, let me just start by saying we at the city, we don't have all the answers, okay? Yeah. Uh, and we have to work together to figure out what is our plan moving forward. And so that's where I've been putting uh, my focus. I mean, we'll, we'll have the thermometer program deployed um, early next week, if not Monday morning. And, and, um, and now that the effort needs to be in on a real, a, a real structured reopening plan. And I think what we need to do is uh, talk about what are those things that build maybe a brand of St. Augustine that we are a safe, progressive community uh, that if you come here, um, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a safe environment. And one of the things that's outlined in the federal guidelines as an example along this, um, they, they, what they recommend is designing a certification program to allow identification of businesses that have put in uh, place best practices to prevent staff and customers. 
And I think we have to have a, I think, uh, I think that the business community needs to have a conversation about that. What does that mean? What is practical? Um, is that, does that include, uh, uh, you know, because candidly, the way I read all the documents, whatever we come up with is going to be something that we decide on. Yeah. Okay? You see. As a community, I'm not saying the city, we as a community decide. And uh, so there needs to be a decision point. Maybe some uh, restaurants would do temperature mon uh, monitoring. Uh, maybe restaurants will uh, have less dense tables. Uh, those, but those are those practices that we need to have earnest conversation about and get into uh, a specific plan. And I think that we have an unusual position as the city of St. Augustine um, in our tourism economy. We're drivable, we're relatively low cost, uh, it's a lot of open space, um, it's beautiful, uh, it, it's gonna be highly desirable as yeah. compared to traveling to Europe. Yeah, absolutely. And, and right. uh, yeah, absolutely. And it just makes me think of the VCB approach also the travel uh, nationally uh, is going also um, the theme is also going to help with that. So let me let me cover the second question, which you answer answered partially, but for our listeners and um, our members who are going to be watching this. The second question is uh, so far since so far it appears uh, that we have been spared of becoming a hotspot for the virus. How do you envision San Augustine reopening smarter, safer? You did address the safer part and sooner. Um, do you want to add anything to uh, answer that question, especially on the sooner part, even though we probably, it's hard to put a date on anything at this point. Uh, I realize also that, you know, you uh, anticipating anticipated closing the businesses downtown a little bit sooner than the state of Florida did. Do you anticipate action sooner? What's your, what's your time frame in your head that you have with your staff and with the commission? From the very beginning, I always said, the sooner we take decisive action, the sooner we can reopen the economy. So they go hand in glove. And so one of the, one of the, the beautiful thing about St. John's County right now is that all of the metrics about um, uh, flattening the curve uh, are, are clearly present in the, uh, the COVID testing data that's reported out by, La, by the state of Florida through our public health department to the state of Florida on the COVID monitoring dashboard. Uh, so all of those are good. And basically, when you go through the guidance documents, arguably, and this will need to be a public health call, but I'm, I feel confident that we're in what would be called a, a, low, uh, a low to moderate spread community, which means it does make it easier for us to reopen sooner. Uh, but in all the categories and in every single document uh, that are guiding policy decision makers, there is a premise that when you reopen, you can also have a reemergence. So, yes. Okay, and so the, the, there, are, there are six things that we need to be thinking about at a local level, okay? Um, and those six things are, is transmission under control? And I think that the, uh, the county and the health systems, mm -hmm. all the efforts of everyone doing social distancing has done a really good job with that. Uh, are the health systems able to detect test and isolate and treat every case and trace every contact, okay? So the good news is our health, uh, the, the, the Flagler Hospital and our health system has not been at capacity, unlike uh, right. other communities. That's a good thing. Our hotspot risks minimized in vulnerable places such as nursing homes. The reality is we don't have any concept of what's happening in nursing homes. That's a real weakness of Florida right now, is that we're not reporting out anything that's occurring uh, in assisted living facilities. I think it's a real tragedy for that. But that's something that we need to press on our health department about. Uh, we need to know where we stand with that. That's a critical element, and that, that needs to be part of a, of a defined plan. Um, and then, of course, uh, do schools and workplaces and other essential places have established preventative measures? And that's what you were asking about, the temperature yes. monitoring, uh, use of personal protective equipment. Uh, what are those very specific plans? And there are very specific things that we're doing at the city I can get to. 
And then, uh, and then lastly, our, um, something which you're helping with this morning is our community is fully educated, engaged, and empowered to live under a new normal. And we have to find this new normal running what is going to be what is technically a very complex type of industry in this new normal, which is a tourism model designed to bring tens of thousands of people to our community. And, and over the next two weeks, I think we need to figure out how to do that uh, uh, practically and as safely as we can. And I think there are very some, I think as we work together, uh, to build that type of plan, I think there we can come out with something that will be a national model. Frankly, I I agree. I agree that um, there's got to be a, a concerted effort. You know, saying that we are all in this together for the reopening, it's even more true for uh, our community in a sense that if we have businesses downtown San Augustine that are uh, employing higher uh, post-virus uh, ID protocol. Uh, than others, you know, it could create a, a lack of trust from our guests and visitors. So having a consistent approach, if possible, I think will be critical uh, for our uh, downtown. Here's, here's what I think. Can I, I'd like to give you a, 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 my view of we're all in this together. Sure. And, and I think, I think it, it, it has to drive that issue of empathy and sympathy and compassion and proactive action. We are all in this together to the extent that we're in a pandemic. We are not all having the same experience. Correct. Okay. My experience is nothing like the experience that your membership is having, who are suffering from unemployment, of loss of income, possibly loss of a business, possibly dealing with sick uh, family members in the middle of all this. We are not all having the same experience. And, correct. And, that is correct. And, and so those of us that are in some level of leadership, you, me, business leaders, everybody, we have to never forget that. And we have to be acting as quickly as we can to be uh, proactively helping those people that are carrying the burden of this. And, uh, and, and it's not me, okay? I'm the city manager. I'm employed. I'm getting a paycheck. But we have to think about those people that aren't. And so everything has to be driven towards thinking with their issues in mind. Absolutely. Uh, that leads me to another question as far as uh, uh, helping our local businesses. This is a question that was submitted uh, yesterday. Uh, do you have any preliminary thoughts on how the city might plan on helping restaurants financially recover from the economic shutdown? Yes. I think that the most important thing, um, there are some details I can get to, but the, oh, the 100,000 foot issue on how we help our restaurants and our businesses come together is we have to work in earnest to put together that very specific plan and get commitments by, the, by our, our other um, institutional partners to execute those parts of the plan uh, that allow us to reopen and recover the economy as quickly as possible. The, 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 the issue is, is we got to find a way to open safely. So what that means, what does that mean? That means that we have to have a commitment from, of, of, uh, from the health department about what is a testing plan? How many people do they test? How many people are, are getting sick? Do they have the capacity to ramp up testing if something were to emerge? Do they have the capacity to isolate? Uh, we, we also need to uh, be able to have commitments from the business community about what are those practices that help create a brand of St. Augustine as being super safe uh, in, 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 rel in relative terms. Uh, and, and we need commitments uh, from, from, the, from the business owners. Uh, we need to um, know what those specific details are. So uh, that, that's how we work together. And so I want you to know in your membership as, as the city manager for the city, I am uh, hellbent uh, to make sure that we pull together that level of coordination, thought, and, and thinking. And uh, so I'm going to be asking your membership to engage with us uh, to help drive what that plan looks like. Now, what are some things that we're doing at the city? 
fairly basic things. We are working very hard to make the city as clean as we can. I was going to ask you the question of what's the situation there. Yeah. So, so, what, so we are we're running um, five pressure washing crews. Uh, I let a uh, contract for the complete cleaning of the parking garage. We have we are repainting um, throughout the city, city-owned structures and so forth. I would encourage people to use this time to to try to brighten up your own businesses. Uh, the city commission asked me to put together a plan that um, keeps up the level of cleanliness and um, sense of disinfection, if you will, uh, that we're executing currently. Uh, so that, that has a budgetary impact and we're working on that plan as we speak. Uh, so those are some things that we're doing. Uh, the other thing also that as we start to build these plans, we can bring uh, we have the ability to handle um, cash flow and uh, uh, large scale purchasing power that is probably beyond any uh, most of the other businesses in the area. Uh, so I'm just going to think out loud for a minute, which is going to get me in a little bit of trouble. Uh, but if we're not really pushing the envelope on this, we've got to push the envelope in order to get open, right? Uh, but uh, we have opened up sources uh, to personal protective equipment for uh, our first responders, et cetera, et cetera. And we order by the thousands. Well, maybe we should be ordering by the hundred thousands. Yeah, and, actually, we and, did. And, and, uh, you know, I mean, the, the FDA just recently um, gave approval uh, to PPE out of China that had prior, previously been considered a crime to import. Only two weeks ago, it was a crime to import some of the materials. Uh, and and, and uh, now they're FDA approved. Go figure, right? Uh, but but maybe, maybe we have a system of maybe the city could be in the dish, uh, have a system where people could, we could uh, do large scale purchasing uh, of the equipment that a restaurant might need. And then we do uh, and then, have and then this a question, program. Or maybe when a when a when a, one of our guests come to visit our city, they can buy a mask for a dollar in the VIC. You see what I'm saying? We need to be thinking out of the box. Yeah, and, and John, we did get I did that, get this uh, question. I That's did a get this term. term. I'm sorry, you use such a cliche term. Yeah, no, I did receive this question from uh, uh, several chamber members that are downtown St. Augustine about he is there a way the uh, city can uh, leverage their purchasing power to be able to purchase masks for their employees. So uh, that would be very helpful to our downtown businesses if that's something that the city can uh, can uh, move forward with. So uh, yeah. know that there were some requests made on that. Uh, if that is an identified need of our business community, I'm completely open to that. I, and in fact, uh, our purchasing department right now is, uh, this morning I asked them to go through all the procurement systems that we have, and uh, I want you to start stop thinking about ordering 5,000 units and be thinking of ordering 50,000, 100,000 units, and tell me what the pricing structures are and availabilities and deliveries. Well, we'll be at the chamber. We'll be happy to make sure that we can uh, uh, gather information from our members and what they'd like to do to help coordinate uh, the reopening. I think it's important that, you know, a chamber member in one of their questions men mentioned that we have one shot to get this right uh, and make sure that we reopen in a safe way uh, so that we don't turn off uh, potential future customers and guests to our town. So we'll be happy to help you with that. One last question I have that actually not interestingly related to COVID-19, but related to the city. Uh, and uh, it's regarding the development in the uh, city um, in the Arabia Street Marina and also the Browdy proposal. Do you have any update on that before we end this call today? Well, ever since coronavirus, I think it's fair to say that the large scale development has gone um, somewhat idle. But all of those projects have been uh, moving, moving forward with ownership, uh, moving forward with earnest to get to construction. Um, the, the San Sebastian project has to go through a, um, our planning and zoning board uh, to because they, they have desire to uh, modify the terms and conditions of their plan unit development agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're, they're, go, they're uh, basically going through an entitlement process. Okay. And uh, then uh, the 
the when you say marina are you referring to the shipyard project yes okay no i'm so, referring to the river year street area uh, okay well riberia that's the san sebastian project yeah. so they're going through our uh planning and zoning board and what we're doing in the city by the way i have a team that is working on bringing uh our boards uh back to being able to meet using virtual technology like we're doing this morning uh because uh it's we play a significant role in keeping that part of the economy moving by virtue of our entitlement processes. That is correct. The other large project is the shipyards, the former Lures uh, factory over uh, uh, near Winn-Dixie off US-1. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of that design is that the owner uh, is staying completely within all the standards of the RGO zoning that the property has. So they're not planning to have to go through any type of uh, uh, entitlement process with lower boards for variances or exceptions or anything like that. Uh, and they have um, unveiled a master plan that is a very, very sophisticated master plan. Uh, that, and uh, their, their goal is to be moving forward um, as quickly as they can. So they're not, they don't have to go through a political process. Okay. Uh, the, the Barry Browdy project is probably the most, well, they're all fascinating projects for, for multiple reasons. Uh, but uh, the Barry Browdy project is um, a beautiful project to the extent that it becomes a, um, a transit, a transit oriented development. So we're working with, uh, uh, with Mr. Browdy on a uh, plan to put in, to have a partnership in additional parking and satellite parking for the city and also for the parking that will be associated with a future as a future train station for commuter rail to Jacksonville. Okay. So we've been working with um, uh, uh, the Jacksonville Transit Authority on a commuter rail plan. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, they're, it's still, they're still working through their funding mechanisms. So this is like you would say a few years down the road? Yeah, but not within five years. Okay. Within five years. And um, so the, the, the development would have uh, residential uh, and some commercial, including a grocery store. Um, so uh, in, in, our, in our urban planning lingo, we call it transit or oriented development. Uh, and they're still working through the design and what would be any type of um, in, uh, variances or exceptions that might be required by the city. Uh, but again, they're doing their best to stay within the uh, the current standards of their of their zoning classes. Well, uh, when we are you know done with this COVID nineteen phase and uh, going back to uh, a new a new normal, we'd love to have you uh, come and join our historic area council to share more about the Rowdy project and uh, when it's uh, appropriate to do so. Uh, would love to. So. Uh, so many things come together at the Barry Browdy projects, uh, ranging from um, bicycle trails to uh, parking on the fringe of the community to train stations, uh, and all that opens up our thought process on what we can be looking at uh, to unlock uh, the redevelopment potential of the West Augustine business community. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you, John. We are close to the end of our time, but I want to give you a couple of uh, minutes to, um, you know, I know you've addressed a lot of the business community, but is there a final few things you'd like to tell our business community downtown, our historic area council members? Well, the, the real, the, the, I get, you know, people will talk to, they'll call and they'll say, what can we do for you? And that's not the question. The question is, what can we do for you? And we have had wonderful suggestions that have been coming into the city. Um, I'll just give you an example. The, the, the one-way one sidewalks on the bridge of lines was a suggestion that came from Jane West, the local environmental attorney. Uh, that night, after we received the request, my staff worked until 10 o'clock at night to get that established so that people could exercise and feel safe crossing the bridge. So if you have an idea, please mail it to me to the city at jregan at citystaug.com. But more importantly, I'm setting up a formalized process by which we can take input from the community and massage it and have it be reflected back uh, in, in how we build our, our uh, reopening plan, if you will. 
uh, not everything is a good idea. There are many practical things. Sometimes we just can't do things, but we'll let you know if we can't. Okay. Um, the one, the one good news is uh, by being at home, I have more time to answer emails. <laughs> uh, so I've actually been doing, you know, keeping up with my email, which is often very difficult. Uh, so, um, so really just take that question. What can we do for you? Uh, and uh, help us understand what your needs are. That's the best thing that you can do. Well, thank you, John. This uh, is wrapping up our chamber conversation this morning with CD manager, John Regan from CD of San Augustine. Thank you for joining us. And we will share all this information to our members and we'll uh, forward all, any feedback that we may get. Thank you, John. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, everybody uh, uh, be safe and uh, we're gonna get through this together. That's right, stay safe, stay informed.